Hello students, welcome to the session. Today we are going to talk about, uh, in this session we are going to talk about the introduction to geometry design only, extension of that. Now, in the last session we have discussed about the, let me write the topic first, introduction to geometric design. Of course, transportation engineering subject. Yeah. So in the last session, we have uh, seen the basics of uh, camber or a cross loop, the formulas for it, and the shapes of camber like parabolic camber, right plane camber, right? And the table which talks about the values that are to be provided for camber. So height of crown is W by 2N and parabolic camber equation is Y is equal to 2X square by NW. Right? So based on this concepts, let's, let us do some problems from the workshop, workbook. So the first question in the workbook talks about these problems. A road of width 3.5 meters is to be laid. Calculate the maximum height of crown with respect to edges. If a straight line camber for a village CC road of light rainfall region. So the width of the road is uh, 3.5 meters. Let me draw a diagram. The width of the road is 3.5 meters, right? Calculate the maximum height of crown with respect to edges if a straight line camber. So he has mentioned that it is a straight line camber. And the maximum height of the crown with respect to edges. Edges are at this particular height. And this is my crown. So I need to calculate the height of crown. And... Uh, Additionally, he has given that this is a village road which is made of cement concrete and the region is of light rainfall region. Light rainfall region, right? So that is the data given here. So the thing that is to be taken care of here is CC road and light rainfall region. Does this term village road has any influence on our problem? No, it has got no impact in our problem. It doesn't matter whether it is a national highway, state highway, expressway, MDR, ODR, village road, architectural road, whatever it is, we are nothing to do with this. So only thing is, for CC road and light fall region. So CC road is in the first type and uh, light rainfall. So please look at, look at the back pages of your notes. Please look at the table which is given during the discussion and tell me the value of camber that is to be considered. For a village CC road, Chodo, village, remove that village, for a CC road, of light rainfall region, the camber to be taken is how much? Tell me from the table. The camber to be taken is 1.7%, right or not? And I am not concerned about the percentages in the problems, right? As I said, in the problems, we require camber in 1 in n format. 1 in n format. So 100 by 1.7 approximately 60 so 1 in 60 is the camber for a village cc road of light rainfall region and now he has asked us me to calculate the height of crown so height of crown for a cc road is equal to w by 2n 
and generally the height of crown will be lesser compared to the width so it will be in centimeters so I take and your options are in mm here okay so options is in mm now so I will take this width also in mm width of the road is 3.5 meters 3.5 meters but I need to convert into mm so I will multiply it with 1000 divided by 2 into n n value 1 in n 1 in 60 so n value for this data is 60 so if you calculate that it comes as yeah 29.2 mm which is given in the option B right very simple and easy one let's take it down This is the first problem, right? First problem in workbook. Yeah, now let us do the second one. A road of width 7 meters is to be laid. So I am drawing the figure. A road of width 7 meters is to be laid. Calculate the maximum height of the crown with respect to edges. If a parabolic camera, so I am drawing the shape of a parabola. So a parabolic camber and I need to calculate the height of crown here. So this is my crown. So I need to calculate the height of crown for an MDR road, major district road with thin bitumenous surface, thin bitumenous surface and heavy rainfall region. So again, look back to your table during the discussion. For a thin bitumenous surface of heavy rainfall region, thin bitumenous surface is in the second type of surface and heavy rainfall region. So for this combination, for this combination, 1.7, 2, 2, and here it is the answer for us, 2.5%. So the camber here is 2.5%. Right or not? From the table you can get it, right? And 2.5%, if you convert into 1 in N format, it is 100 by 2.5 is 40. So 1 in N is nothing but 1 in 40. So this is a parabola here. So I'll be using the equation for parabola. Y is equal to 2x squared by NW y is equal to 2x squared by nw so i want the height of crown so i want the height of this parabolic shape at a distance of x by 2 at a distance of x by 2 sorry at a distance of w by 2 so my x is w by 2 right or not my crown for the parabolic camber will be half the width of the road so x is w by 2 so and here my options are in mm so i take the values also in the mm so y is equal to 2 into x is w by 2 x is x is uh, say 7 meters x is 7 meters here so 
x is 7 meters so 7000 by 2 whole square divided by n n from from this we got n as 40 from this we got n as 40 so w w is 7000 meters so 2 into 7000 square divided by 2 square is 4 into 40 into 7000 so this 7000 and 1 7000 gets cancelled so this is 2 times so it is 700 by 8 1 0 and 0 get cancelled right so it is 700 by 8 whatever comes you can calculate right so you can note it down So if you calculate this, it comes as 87.5 mm. So that is the height of crown here, 87.5 mm. Right. Yeah, let's do the next problem on this. So, read the question number three. If the difference in elevation between the edges of payment of fit 9 meters and its crown is 7.5 centimeters. So, if the difference in elevations between the edges of payment of fit 9 meters and its elevation is 7.5 centimeters and he has mentioned that what is the camber for cc payment so he has talked about cc payment so by default by default if nothing is given by default cc payment means cc payment means straight line camber right or not which I have already set during the theory part. So I have drawn a straight line camber and he has given that the difference in elevation, the difference in elevation between the edges of payment of width 9 meters and its crown is 7.5 centimeters. 7.5 centimeters. And we need to calculate the camber here, right? So simple one. The only thing to be known is by default, CC payment means a straight line camber, right? So, what is that 7.5 centimeters? He has given this 7.5 centimeters is nothing but height of crown, which is equal to W by 2N. So, 7.5 centimeters, here it is in centimeters, so I take W also in centimeters, so it is 900 centimeters divided by 2 into n. So n is equal to 900 by 2 into 7.5, which if you calculate, it comes as 60. So the camber 1 in n is nothing but 1 in 60, and 1 in 60 is simply 1.7%. So camber is 1.6 percent, 1.7 percent, or 1 in 60, 1 in 60, right? So this is how we calculate the cambers. You can narrow it down.
I hope you are done with this. So that's about the camber and uh, the problems related to camber. Now we'll be seeing the simple, simple uh, geometrical standards and specifications that are to be maintained uh, for our roads. You can say that as standards because based on those things only the design will be there. The first element is width of carriageway. Width of carriageway. First of all, what is a carriageway? It's a very simple term. Carriage plus way. The way over which the vehicles are being carried is called as carriageway. Carriage plus way, right? So the way or the path over which the vehicles are being carried, the vehicles are being moved, is called as a carriageway. And what should be the width of carriageway? How much width should I provide? for the vehicles to move on. That is called as width of carriageway. Now, how much should I provide? This much, this much, or this much? What are the factors which is influencing that? Simple. Width of carriageway is equal to number of lanes into lane width. Number of lanes into lane width one lane road two lane road three lane road four lane road six lane road eight lane road we call it right so number of lanes into lane width now what is the lane width what are the factors which affect the lane width how much should be the width of a single lane road obviously that depends on the type of vehicles move right and generally if you take a vehicle generally if you take a vehicle it is the width of the vehicle, right? The maximum width of the vehicle, maximum width of vehicle as per IRC, which are to be moved in India, means if a vehicle has to be moved on the Indian roads, then the maximum width of the vehicle as per IRC should not be more than 2.44 meters. So it is 2.44 meters plus some clearance on both the sides. Some clearance on the both the sides. Right? So for a single lane road, for a single lane road, the width of single lane road is 3.75 meters. 3.75. 75 meters. So again, most of the people will say it wrongly. They call it as 3.5 meters. No. Width of a single lane road is always 3.75 meters only. Only. Now, what is that 3.5? If more number of lanes are there, then it is multiples of 3.5. Means, if a two-lane road is there, it is 2 into 3.5, 7 meters. Similarly, if a 3-lane road is there, it is 3 into 3.5. It is 10.5 meters. So if n number of lanes are there, number of lanes into lane width. Number of lanes into lane width. That is how you will get, that is how you will get the total width of the road. Number of lanes into lane width. And if anybody asks you width of a single lane road, then it is 3.75 meters. Now, there are some types of roads for which, which are more than 3.75 and are lesser than 2 lane. They are called as 
intermediate lanes intermediate lanes wherever the width of the road available is more than single lane and less than 7 meters that is two lane road we go for intermediate lanes and width of an intermediate lane is 5.5 meters width of an intermediate lane is 5.5 meters now there is one more term called width of a two lane road with curves then it is 7 plus 0.5 that is 7.5 meter now what is a curve what is a curve curve is the vertical clearance between roadway and the footpath so this is the roadway and this is the footpath so the vertical differentiation between the road and the footpath is called as curve why is it needed what is the necessary of curve if you don't provide curve what happens footpath will be of the same level with the roadway and people start coming onto the footpath also and if that happens pedestrians can't move pedestrians can't travel right so to restrict the usage of this space from the vehicles we provide curb it is a vertical differentiation now if the curb is existing what happens will you travel closer towards the curb no right we maintain some gap we maintain some distance from the curb and that is why if you maintain a curb if you provide a curb you will be having you will be moving with a bit far from the curb that is why an extra clearance of 0.5 meters is provided if there is a curb because some place over here will not be used by the vehicles as a clearance distance as a safety criteria so if they ask you the width of a two-lane road including curbs it is 7 plus 0.5 or 7.5 meters so that is how we find the width of carriageway and there are some other terms called as curves or yeah sorry uh, yeah we have already seen what is a curve but there are different types of curves like low or mountable curves semi mountable or semi barrier type of curves and the last one is barrier type of curves so these are the different types of curves low or mountable semi mountables or semi barrier and barrier type curves now the name itself says now the name itself says low or mountable curve means your vehicle ca can easily mount it your vehicle can easily come onto the footpaths right low or mountable and generally if the height is in between 10 to 15 centimeters then it is called as a low or a mountable curve your vehicle can easily climb that and if the height is more than 15 centimeters it, it you can climb it with a little difficulty so it is called as semi mountable or semi barrier type and barrier type means height more than 20 centimeters can be called as can be called as barrier type of curve can be called as barrier type of the curve right and generally we should provide barrier type only vehicles should not come onto the curves sorry vehicles should not come onto the footpaths right so that's about the curves nothing special now median it is also called as divider it is also called as traffic separator
Now, what is the purpose of median? It divides the traffic. Why you should divide the traffic? To eliminate accidents. What type of accident? Will it reduce or it will, will it re eliminate it completely? Yeah. So, we have different types of accidents. Like, many types of accidents are there, but these are the major types. Head-on collision. Rear end collision, right angle collision, and siding or swiping or brushing. Now, if the head and head of two vehicles collide, it is called as a head-on collision. So, if you are moving in this way and somebody comes and hits from the opposite side, it is called as a head-on collision. Now, you are moving in this fashion and somebody comes and hits you in the back, it is called as a rear end collision. Now, you are moving in this way and somebody hits in this fashion, it is called as a right angle collision. This is a right angle collision, right? Now you'll be moving in this fashion. Some other guy comes slowly, small scratch, and moves away. So it can be called as siding, brushing, or swiping. Generally, this happens mostly in the cities. Two vehicles will be approaching towards them. A small crash will be there, and this deviate. Now, these are the major types of accidents. Among these four types, if you provide some proper measures which can be completely eliminated, which type of collision can be completely removed, just think and say me. Yes, you can completely eliminate head on collision by providing median or a divider or a traffic separator. And you can completely eliminate right angle collision, completely eliminate right angle collision by providing what? Signals, generally right angle collision. This type of accident happens at the signals, intersections only, right? So if you provide proper signals and if everybody follows the rules, of course, you can completely eliminate right angle collision. Now, our main concern here is about the median or a divider or a traffic separator. So, the purpose of median or divider or traffic separator is to completely eliminate head-on collision. What is the other purpose of median? Yes, yes, there is one more purpose of providing a median or a separator. Now, during night times, most of us have faced this problem, especially in the highways. There will be an effect of glare from the opposite directions, right? During the night time. A research says that in order to eliminate the effect of glare during the night time, from the opposite vehicles, there should be a difference of 15 meters. If the difference between both the sides, from the opposite sides and this side is 15 meters or more than that, then only effect of glare will, be, will not be there. But is it possible to provide a difference of 15 meters? You can't provide, right? Our roads ourselves are not more than 15 meters in most of the cases. So, it is not possible to differentiate both the roads by 15 meters. So what we do is, we plant trees in the median so that the trees will be obstructing the light rays. So your glare effect will be decreased. So the other purpose of is to plant trees on the medians to decrease the effect of 
glare right now finally about the medians how much should i provide what should be the width of the median the width of the median should be 5 meters in case of rural highways and you can limit it to 1.2 meters in case of long bridges and urban areas so that is the minimum values of widths for median as per IRC right now we can note it down these two things I hope you have noted down. So the next uh, element uh, that exists on the road is uh, shoulder.
what is the shoulder not this one huh? shoulder yeah you can compare though so if this is the road the adjacent parts will be the shoulder right the extra place what we provide beside the roads is called as shoulders extra place beside the carriageway is called as a shoulder now why we should provide that shoulder why we should provide that extra place what is the reason for it yes it provides it is the only purpose it is the only purpose it provides place for the emergency breakdown of vehicles emergency breakdown of vehicles it provides place for the emergency breakdown of vehicles so when you are traveling on a highway or any road if your vehicle gets breakdown due to any reason then you can stop that vehicle and park it in the extra place that is the only purpose of shoulder but people start using overtaking also we should not do it right it is the only purpose of providing a shoulder now what should be the width of the shoulder again common sense as i said that you should be able to park your vehicle on the roads on the shoulders so it should be able to take one vehicle right so what is the width of one vehicle 2.44 meters which i have already shown which i have already discussed so at least width of the shoulder should be 2.5 meters so as per irc the minimum width of the shoulder the minimum width of shoulder should be 2.5 meters what should be the strength of the shoulder should we construct our shoulders as of same quality with our road no we should differentiate our shoulder material with the main road surface though we have money though we have resources though we have labor reason is if you construct the shoulder with the same quality as of road then people start using shoulders vehicles will be moving on the shoulders so that is why we wantedly decrease the quality of shoulder and generally we provide earthen material earthen surface so what should be its strength the minimum strength of the shoulder should be such that it should withstand a fully loaded truck during the peak monsoon season also right it should withstand it should be able to withstand a fully loaded truck during monsoon season peak monsoon season this we have seen in many of the roads in our day to day life in the peak monsoon seasons generally if uh, heavy uh, in the sides of the roads if any vehicle if any heavy vehicle is moving sometimes the wheels of the heavy vehicles gets undergoes right so that is why it should have some minimum strength to withstand that right that's about the shoulder next cycle lane so it is common sense that if you provide a road if you provide a lane especially for the moment of cycles it can be called as a cycle lane nothing special now what they ask is what is the width of a single lane width of cycle lane for one lane it is 2 meters and thereafter for any additional lane you add 1 meter for any additional lane you simply add 
one meter. So for two lane, it is two plus one, three meters. For three lane road, for three lane cycle road, it is three plus one, four meters. Right? So that is how we say the width of cycle road. If they ask you width of a single cycle lane width, cycle uh, single lane for a cycle is two meters. Two lane, it is two plus one, three meters. Three lane, it is three plus one, four meters. Right? So that is how we find the width of cycle lane. Next one is uh, guardrails. This uh, guardrails are nothing but the safety things or the safety barricades that we provide along the sides of the road. Where we should provide this? Obviously in the hilly areas we provide towards the valley side. And if your embankment, if your road surface is having a higher width, means if the embankment height is more than three meters, then also we should provide a barricades. Barricades are nothing but guardrails. So that if any vehicle loses its control, that guardrails will stop from falling off that vehicle from the height. And lastly, footpaths. And this is also everybody knows. Footpaths are nothing but the paths, the movement, the paths which are provided for the movement of uh, pedestrians, footpaths. And generally pedestrians are designed, generally footpaths are designed for minimum of two persons to walk at a time. Generally, pedestrian uh, footpaths are designed for a minimum of two persons to walk at a time. So if you take a particular person, the widest part in a person will be at the shoulder. This is the widest part, right? So two persons are there. So I said that a footpath is to be designed for two persons to walk at a time. So this is my first person. This is the second person. And if you take a shoulder, the width of the shoulder will be around 60 centimeters for a maximum value. So 60 centimeters, that is 0.6 meter and 0.6 meter. And there is a clearance of 0.3 meters. So total is 1.5 meter. So the minimum length of footpath is 1.5 meter two persons to walk at a time so two persons with 600 meter 660 centimeters and 30 centimeters clearance so 60 plus 60 120 120 plus 30 is 150 150 centimeters is nothing but 1.5 meters but that is that is the minimum length and as the number of pedestrians increases you should increase the width and similarly one way movement and two way movement also matters if two-way movement is there, then there will be more obstructions, so it should even increase, or the capacity of the footpath decreases if there is a two-way movement. So there is a given, the uh, IRC has given a table for finding or fixing the width of the footpath. So it has got uh, pedestrian traffic instead of vehicular traffic because pedestrians are meant for footpaths pedestrian traffic now this pedestrian traffic can be one way or it can be two way means from both the sides so footpath width can be 1.5 meter 2 meter 2.5 meter 3 meter or it can be 4 meter now you should provide the pedestrian width based on these numbers. For example, it is uh, 1200 
2400 multiples of 1200 you can say next one is 3600 next multiple is 4800 similarly here it is the multiples of uh, 800 so it is 800 1600 2400 and 3200 right so here you have five values right so fourth value will be 4800 plus 1200 is say 6000 and here it would be 3200 plus 800 is 4000 right so based on the pedestrian volumes if two way traffic is there if both movement is there for uh, 1.5 meters it can accommodate 1200 pedestrians per hour pedestrian traffic per hour right pedestrian traffic per hour similarly if two way movement is there it is only 800 if one way means obstructions will be lesser only one way movement either this way or this way so capacity increases to 1200 so that is how we decide the pedestrian width that is footpath width and there is one more point here called as cbd areas cbd areas central business district means there will be some places in regions where the population is very much higher where the that is a fully developed place occupied with many people occupied with many pedestrians street vendors right yeah for example take a shopping area people come to the shopping area generally by walking only right so in those kinds of areas in those kinds of regions uh, are called as CBD areas and in those kinds of regions footpath is to be footpath width is to be increased by one meter so wherever a CBD area is there you can increase the footpath width by one meter so that's about the shoulder cycle lane guardrails and footpaths right you can note it down 